Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Well, I suppose it's quite a tiring day, but quite fulfilling, especially for me. Well, my name is Nicola Liberati, and uh, I am JSPS postdoctoral researcher in uh, Japan at Chuk University in philosophy. So it could be quite strange to be here and speak to you, but don't worry. I hope you will enjoy it. No, but it doesn't work, don't worry. So. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here for the last panel of this day. Well, in five minutes, I will try to give you just an idea without providing any kind of demonstration in order to make the talk as fluid as possible and to um, leave more time for the questions. Because actually, I'm here not to give you answers, but to ask you a question and to get more ideas from you kind of rubber. So, so the aim of this mini talk is to show how it's possible to use augmented reality in a different way. And augmented reality, as everybody knows, at least at this conference, tries to merge digital world and our everyday experience. I will try to do it with hands. <laughs> digital <laughs> words with our everyday experience. And the way such a merge is achieved is the topic of this presentation. The merge is usually made by bringing features of the digital world into our everyday experience. For example, augmented objects are created in order to be deeply intertwined with a network. Every object around the subject becomes connected, and the subject can see this connection using the POSIS devices just by pointing to, to these objects, like, I don't know, uh, glasses or iPhones and so on. For example, by turning on an augmented reality, we can get more information about our surroundings and see hidden aspects of uh, our world which was mm, completely uh, hidden and uh, reachable only mm, thanks to browsing the web. So another way to use augmented reality is to wrap our everyday world with different augmented layers. Augmented reality allows us to create possible worlds around us by adding objects in our everyday world. So, um, what is more important um, is that we can freely move among these potential worlds by turning the device on and off, or the application on and off. This freedom to move from one world to another one is very close to the freedom we have in virtual reality because we can choose freely to jump into a virtual world and we can decide when to be disconnected from it. <coughs> Augmentation are created to be just potential words and they exist only as far as we want them. Or, for example, because we need it or they can help us in our everyday activities. So, as you can see, even from these few elements, augmented reality is trying to make the merge between the digital and the everyday experience by making our everyday more close to the virtual reality, making it more computer-like experience. It produces augmentation which directly aim to make our world similar to the virtual one by making it more interconnected and by making the existence of such augmentation purely related to the subject's will, as in the case of virtual realities. However, there is another way to make such a merge. We need just to move in the opposite direction, so, mm, which means we can design an augmented reality which brings the characteristic uh, elements of our everyday world to the digital one, rather than the opposite. For example, we could use augmented reality to create objects which are not designed to bring any virtual elements in our world, but which are digital, just because they are visualized thanks to digital devices. So in some way, we could use the oxymoron digital materiality to help ourselves designing augmented objects which are real as other common objects around us, even if they are not thick as, I don't know, this piece of wood. Moreover, we could design objects which are not part of possible worlds in which the subject freely choose to access, but we could design something which is not so easily removable from our everyday world. So actually, the question I, we should ask, and I would like to ask to you, is why are we trying to make our world more digital 
and not to make the digital world more real. So bringing this virtuality to the reality instead of bringing our reality to the, real, to the virtuality. I'm not saying that the actual direction is, is wrong. I'm just saying it is partial. And so maybe we should explore more different paths in order to have a full exploration of augmented reality and a full understanding of its potentialities. Thank you very much. I hope you will help me. <laughs> Thank you, Nicola. So do we want to open the floor for questions, or did you want to just ask? No, please. Question answers actually it's quite the same. So. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how to make the uh, digital world more real? Are you talking about capturing the real world data and presenting it in the AR world or VR world? means to sorry means to try to create objects which responds to other objects has common objects like this like thick objects does uh, normally um, also in all the application you can see in this magnificent uh, uh, expo you have digital objects which even if looks like this common objects because are visualized among other common objects actually are just closed in their own uh, sphere of existence which are determined by the exist by the activation of your devices glasses or mobile devices the real i think the the real uh, um, step we need to do is to create a kind of existence of these objects even when the technology is off this is the I don't know what makes this object part of our world. Visualization of the object, uh, it's, it's not so important. So you're talking about the existence of the AR system. Yeah, I'm talking. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm not talking about persistence because it's too much related to the concept of materiality we have with this object. The object is persistence and so on. Actually, I'm talking about intersubjectivity of the object. So wha wha why this object is valid for our society? When you have a very close sphere of existence between users, this object is existence only for this kind of uh, small community. We should try to open this community even to the one who are not able to join the community. Only in this way, we are making the object actually real. For example, actually, uh, I propose a project, but I failed, <laughs> um, about creating a, an augmented monument in Tel Aviv. In this way, even other people were not able to see the, the monument because they are not, uh, they had no applications or they had no mobile devices. They were forced to consider the empty space in front of them as part of an augmentation. And so in this way, the augmented objects which is immaterial, uh, Im immaterial in this way, actually becomes material because it becomes part of our world. You cannot just say, well, this is just fiction, as actually you can do with uh, some augmentations, because actually you are playing, and this object makes, uh, has sense only inside the, your, your game. Has children, too. We have time for one more response. So Sorry. I was just going to give you an example of, I think, the opposite. Thank you. So, okay, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I was actually part of a group we ran that had a virtual reality, I think, second life for business. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge was that the vast majority of people didn't want to be in that all the time. Um, you could get the geeks to be in it all the time, but the executives <laughs> wouldn't be, quite frankly. So one of the thought processes was there's actually an activity at Berkeley where they're creating interior mapping for Google. Mm -hmm. It's the same group that created the algorithms originally. So the idea is you map a building internally. You now can create a virtual world where people can exist in the virtual that's actually a mirror map of the real world. So for example, I walk down the hallway in the virtual office building and I walk up to your virtual office door. The door is open, I walk in. What I see is actually a video camera of your office. Yeah, of course. What you see is on the wall, me in the virtual space. So we've actually replicated Nice. the interactive experience of taking the virtual world and integrating it back into the real world. 
And I, I think that's a very interesting thought process. I mean, the aug you're right, the augmented reality overlay augmentation onto the real world is one, but taking the virtual world and mirror integrating, I think, is another interesting example. So well, thank you very much. I actually I keep an eye on it, uh, but I do not understand one thing. Are you saying that a person who is using this kind of device actually are visiting the place as a normal person do? Or right. So in other words, I, in other words, I'm in the so virtual. So you, you have a kind of repl a replica of the real world, and you can in the navigate. virtual world, right? Instead exactly. of the virtual world being being this fantasy land, exactly. the virtual world is exactly a replica of the real yeah, world. Yeah, but in this way, so you people can be in both places and interact in real yeah, time. Yeah, but uh, you, well, this is difficult to say in few words. But in this way, you have a kind of image which stands for a real object. As I take a picture of you, and uh, I don't know, I try to burn it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I try to, to do this right. Actually, I'm not destroying you, of course. I'm just destroying the replica of this. So actually, I completely agree with, with this, because it could be a very functional way to communicate or to recreate a telepresence, for example. Exactly. But it's still related to the virtuality of this conception. So it's like uh, having a second world, which just look like the same of our world in another place. Uh, you, you are living actually in another place, not in this one. And while augmented reality is trying to bring everything in this place, it's here. So actually, we can, now we have this kind of technology which makes the objects real. And that we should elaborate more suggestions in order to make these objects not strictly related to one very small community, which are the, the users of this application, which makes social impact of this object, like, for example, an augmented monument, which is part of the city. So you cannot live without part of the city. Or better would be a post office. But, well, it's quite difficult to, <laughs> to think about an augmented post office. Thank you very much, Nicola. Nicola Liberati.